Hey everyone, I am Mr. Cheebs. There are sort of a lot of things related to domains in Mantaflow, so I'm going to have to split that up into two videos. This week we will do smoke domains, and next week we will do liquid domains. Given that this is the present, we will be doing smoke. Let's hop into Blender and check some things out. Of course, I have my simple scene set up here with my domain and my inflow object, both using the default settings for smoke and gas. Let's click on the domain and see what we have to deal with here. First, we can change between a gas and a liquid domain for either gas or liquid simulation. Below that, we have the resolution divisions to increase and decrease the amount of cells inside the domain. If you want to see how big a cell is, you can find a little box in the corner of the domain that represents a cell's size. Time scale changes the speed of the simulation. Like everything else here, this can be keyframed. Pretty useful for some slow motion ramping effects. The CFL number is a confusing one. Looking it up gets videos like this, which I'm not smart enough to decipher. The Blender manual defines it as the maximum velocity per grid cell, but it doesn't slow down the simulation as a whole. Here's a comparison. From this, we can see that the CFL number seems to smooth out the simulation the higher its value becomes. These next three settings deal with time steps. A time step is a calculation done for the fluid simulation, sort of like the sub steps from our last video on flow objects. You can have multiple time steps per frame. The difference between time steps and sub steps is that a sub step seems to be how many times a flow object is sampled, whereas a time step is how many times the smoke itself is calculated. Turning on adaptive time steps will make Mantaflow use a number of time steps in between the minimum and maximum values as to save on performance. These gravity options are grayed out as Mantaflow uses the gravity settings from your scene properties by default. If we disable gravity in the scene settings, we can change these gravity settings for each of the three axes. So we can get some sideways falling smoke, which of course is always welcome. The Bake Data button calculates and saves the simulation to the disk. Under that, we have six toggles for border collisions. This will make the smoke collide with the border for the side it represents, rather than clipping off and disappearing. Now then, under that, we have Smoke Settings. Both the Buoyancy Density and Buoyancy Heat settings define the buoyancy of the smoke and how it relates to those two attributes. Increasing either of these settings will result in faster rising smoke. Increasing the vorticity value will result in more turbulence and, well, craziness. Keep this value pretty low, as it scales really fast. Toggling on dissolve will let the smoke disappear after a period of time, defined by this time value. This can be useful if you don't want your smoke to clip off at the edge of the domain. The slow toggle will make the smoke dissolve slower and be a bit more gradual. This fire menu has all the settings for fire, as its name would suggest. Reaction speed controls how fast the flames burn. Low values here result in absolutely enormous flames, whereas high values give tiny flames. Smoke is generated when the flames are present, but we can control the amount of smoke with this flame smoke value. This vorticity value gives the flames additional turbulence and randomness separate from the smoke. Temperature maximum and minimum control the highest and lowest temperature that the flames will be. The higher these values are, the faster the smoke will move upwards, given that it will be hotter. And then we have the flame color, used for assigning color to the flames, rather like what we can do with smoke in flow object settings. Toggling on Adaptive Domain will cause the fluid domain to adapt to the size that the smoke takes up, so that time it will not be wasted calculating the state of empty domain cells. This can dramatically speed up bake time, so I almost always have it toggled on. If you get a little bit of jittering over your whole simulation though, this can sometimes be the culprit. The Adaptive Domain can actually size itself outside of the bounds of the original domain object, but only if additional cells are added there with the add resolution value. The margin is the amount of space that will be left between the smoke and the edge of the adaptive domain. The lower you can make this, the faster your simulations will bake. 
However, it may lead to some clipping issues if the smoke is moving fast. The threshold value is the value at which the adaptive domain considers a cell to be empty, so that it can be clipped from the simulation by the domain. Don't make this very high or the domain will cut off visible smoke from your simulation. Below that, we have the noise settings. Noise can be used to add additional resolution to the simulation without increasing the amount of domain cells. It only works if noise is toggled on. Noise has to be baked separately from the initial bake and causes the smoke to disappear if it is toggled on and has no information baked. The upres factor controls how much resolution will be added to the smoke. This isn't entirely clear, but I do believe that the number acts as a multiple, so a value of 3 would give us a simulation with 3 times the resolution of the base. Wavelet is the only noise method, so don't bother trying to change that. Strength controls the influence of the noise, rather like the vorticity values from earlier. Scale controls the size of the noise, so a larger value results in bigger swirls. Time is sort of like a seed for our noise, so changing that value will result in a slightly different noise pattern. And under that, we have a button to actually bake out the noise and add that resolution. If your cache is in modular mode, this will be here, but if it's in file mode, you just have to toggle on noise and the whole thing will be baked at once. Once this is baked, you will still be able to switch between the simulation with noise and the simulation without by changing this toggle. Next, we have a menu for guides. I'm not going to talk about this now as we haven't covered effector guides yet, but rest assured that we will get to this later once we know more about guides and how to use them. The collections menu allows you to select what collection your flow and effector objects are in for this specific domain. So you could actually have multiple domains each calculating different flow and effector objects. Under that, we have the cache settings, which we already went over in the first video. A little correction from there though, OpenVDB caches actually do work for smoke simulations, but not for liquid sims. So for liquid, use a unicache, and for smoke, use OpenVDB. Then we have two more menus remaining, field weights and the viewport display. Field weights allow you to define what collection to use for force objects and change the influence that each of the types have on the simulation. Force objects are really useful for cool simulations, so we'll be looking at how to use those in future videos. The viewport display tab gives us some settings for how the smoke will be visualized. Thickness changes the thickness of the smoke. To display smoke in a 3D space, the computer uses a technique known as slicing. I'm pretty sure this works by splitting the volume into multiple image cross sections and then overlaying them to create the 3D visualization. The settings for slicing the simulation are right here. I'm not qualified to explain much more about how this works technically, so I'll just mostly show the difference between the settings. The slicing can be changed between view and axis. There isn't really a change between the two. If this is set to axis, then we can change the method though. Full will slice the full simulation, giving us a detailed 3D model, whereas single will give us a single slice so we only have a single image plane representing our smoke. The axis for this image automatically changes as we move in the viewport, but we can restrict it to one axis with the axis setting. The position will move the slice from side to side, so we can have it represent somewhere in the domain that isn't the exact middle. We need to switch the slicing back to view to change the slice per voxel setting. This controls how many slices will be generated per domain cell, so the more you have, the denser and more accurate the visualization will be. The interpolation can be switched between cubic and linear. Cubic looks better, but it is a bit slower. Color mapping allows us to see the different attributes that Mantaflow generates as they apply to our simulation. We have a color ramp which we can add colors to and move around to change the way the smoke is represented. I honestly don't use this color mapping very much, but it can be somewhat useful. Debug velocity is the last thing here, which would hypothetically show the velocity of the simulation. But in Blender 2.82a, I haven't been able to get it to show anything. Blender 2.83 just barely released, and it does actually work in that version, giving us two different methods to see the velocity and a scale slider to control the scale. 
One quick thing before I end this video. If you want to have lighting show instead of having flat gray smoke, add in a light source before you bake the smoke. It actually took me a really long time to discover this, and it's super useful. The next video will of course be about fluid domains, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss that next one. I want to thank you all for watching, and have a great day.